Hello and welcome back to Advanced Horang Lessons. Steve is Horang's rival, right? You saw that in the Tekken 5 intro. We all know that. That's why they're partners in uh, Tekken Tag 2 and Street Fighter X Tekken. And hopefully they're going to have an interaction in Tekken 8. But beyond that, since Steve is his rival and Steve has a counter hit back one, which is I-13, Horang said, yeah, I also too will have a counter hit 13 frame high. That way I can be like Steve Fox and Steve Fox can say, I'm also like Horang. But that's not the only move that is counter hits at 13 for Horang. He also has the OG one, which has always been his main counter hit launcher in RFF. RFF back three at 13 frames. Let's, de let's dive into these two moves. So let's cover the new move first, which is again, LFF back four. I believe this is a new move because for the most part, his back four in Tekken Tag 2 and in Tekken 6 was his homing move, DF4. And DF4 in Tekken Tag 2 was DF4-3, homing mid-high. So for the most part, the counter that only existed was this one, RFF back three. But that's besides, besides the point. So again, LFF back four. This is an I-13 high. You see it's plus two on hit. And notice how he kind of like Horang steps towards the left a little bit. So he has a chance to avoid a couple of things. I wish I had an example to show you, <laughs> but just trust me, the source, source, trust me, bro. <laughs> there, there are times where your opponent's pressuring you, boom, because he just moves his shoulder over to the side, hurt box is gone, and the bang, back four. But don't rely on it as much. Just see it like more as like a 13 frame magic four rather than like invasive-ish, 13 frame magic four. But if you do the lab work, right, okay do the lab work right then you can kind of like treat it as like an evasive magic four ish in specific situations so not only is it plus two on hit it is also negative seven on block and key thing because we're not after whether you can use the plus frames there or not what we're after is where does it track towards to right so let's say we do lfs1 classic scenario where you're plus five on block after left flamingo one it doesn't track towards the left so that's again sidestep left. If we change this to sidewalk left, all the more it will not catch. But if we change this to sidestep right, that's when it catches. Well, I mean, it's the right leg. Therefore, it should track to the <laughs> right side. <laughs> Same thing with sidewalk left. Good. Same thing if you do a regular jab. All right. But that doesn't work at like range one. Well, rather, if you put it to sidestep right, there's the chance where it loses. So if you're like a point blank at plus one or plus two, Basically, the higher your frame data, the better. It wouldn't matter what range you're at, range one or zero. But for the most part, if you're playing with lower frames, we'll track well towards the right at range zero. So yeah, fine. You know what? Let's cover what can you could do on, on hit, right? So again, backdash is always the key thing, right? So yeah, naturally, that's always going to whiff. RFF D4, that's going to whiff. So it's like, but down 3-4 catches. You know what else catches? It's JFSR. You know what else catches? Not DF1-3. <laughs> but DF1 plus 2. Again, this is against regular backdashes, I have to say that. <laughs> because against, against stronger backdashes, a couple of these options will lose. Mainly DF1 plus 2, but not GFSR. Down back 3 will have a chance. Or down 3-4 rather, will have a chance to lose there. Yeah, you do another one of those RFF down back 3, hidden. And I think you can uh, lock them in with a backlash. So you're fine. Not really the end of the world, it's just that you don't have a lot of like, you can't go straight into uh, pressure tools immediately, such as RFF24, RFF DF4, and RFF4. If you want it, you're gonna have to go through the other ways. Like you go straight for a running three, you go for a down three, four, etc. Like get some plus frames or like a backlash so that you can do your one, two, four, one, two, three, etc., etc., etc. So your BNB combo for this is pretty strong. This works for most of the cast, not the smallest characters, all naturally. But that's 78 damage. That's pretty good. Really good, in fact. If we swap it to a smaller character, again, smaller characters, Eliza, Lucky Chloe, Xiaoyu, and Kunimitsu. Kunimitsu being the smallest. Your combo changes here because, again, the hurtbox is really, really small. So you can't backlash on straight axis. If you're off axis a little bit where it's going to be realigned to straight, that's when you will get... Uh, a backlash, although I am not. There you go. Took a while, <laughs> but yeah, you see how off-axis you gotta be 
that's the only time you'll get it. But for the most part, the combo you usually do, you sidestep into a Peacekeeper. Not that hard to pull off for as long as you practice it. Average view duration. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. It doesn't drop this time, baby! 75. So you're three points away if you practice that BNB, which you should. Because if you don't do that and you go up for something simpler, let's say you do back four, sidestep forward two, which is pretty easy, you'll end up with 70 damage. So now you're five points away from SSR FF4 and from eight points away from Backlash. So that's like a huge difference in terms of like combo utility. Mm -hmm. So you should practice that combo when you know, when you're playing against the smaller characters, and it's usually them that it won't hit by. It does hit Noctis, Leroy, and Lee. Those are the smallest guys for the most part. But then we're not done with back four just yet. This move has some slight pushback on block if you've noticed. And if the opponent backdashes all the more, look how much space you get from your opponent. So you can kind of use it to, to get a punish. So let's say this is on block. I jab or do something that we'll lose. There you go. This situation is not going to happen as often, but there will be situations like it where a DF1 will not catch. But however, if it's the DF1 that will catch, you'll get locked. But if it's right at the, a specific range, it will whiff. And if you press a different move instead of RFF DF4, say right plasma blade probably would hit or an up forward 3 plus 4 4 for a short whiff punish. You're gonna get it, and that's pretty neat. So your opponent still has to watch out for that. But for the most part, if they do catch you immediately right after a back four, you kind of like are not moving anywhere. It's the same thing with JFSR on block, despite being negative eight with pushback on block. If they just lock you in, you're locked in. So it's just like, are they gonna use the frames or are they gonna press a move that will not catch you? Huh? Those two things. So you can check for that. If not, I wouldn't bother trying to squeeze a button. Again, you're stuck in RFF. The only options you have if you really wanted to, is something like a down jab. Like that. But a DF1 will still hit you, so it only beats out the highs, a magic four or a jab. But if they check mid-check you consistently, give it up. Like, it's not Tekken 8 yet. I can't tell you to, like, you could throw out up back two. <laughs> We're still in Tekken 7. So that's uh, back four. The pseudo Steve Fox wannabe in Horang. Now let's go back, let's go to his OG, RFF back three. So it's exactly the same move. It's just like, yeah, I mean, just, just look at the, just look at the animations. Look at it. They, they're kind of the same. Just different legs, I suppose. So RFF back three, 13 frames, plus two on hit. Same dice in terms of like the options you're allowed to use, right? When the opponent back dashes. It's just that you're in LFF. So you can F1 plus two or, or not. <laughs> So DF4 would be the way to go. You get access to down back three. Down three four will still hit. And JFSR. Just not uh DF1. But maybe DF1 plus two? There you go. So you can use the frames and you have an 11 frame mid-check to work with. And then on block, this move is more or less still the same. Negative seven on block. Again, it's exactly the same move, just towards the left. And since the options are a little bit different, you get a mid, right? Or rather, DF1 plus 2 hits here compared to back 4. It also tracks towards the left. So again, if we put a put it Horang in a situation, let's say RFS 2 plus 5, we're going to catch anyone stepping towards the left. So that side step left, we're going to change it to side walk left. Boom. Now, of course, it won't work towards the right whatsoever. Yeah, that's always going to whiff, whiff out. So back four will catch. Well, well, LFF back four, but you can't do LFF back four from RFF. So again, if you're on step towards the left, RFF back three if you're in RFF. And then if you're in LFF and they're stepping towards the right and you want it to like make them pay the price for it, you hit them with a counter hit launcher in RFF back three or LFF back four. Now the combo for this, there are two combos you can go for. I did show two combos earlier, but for this one, this hits like pretty much all sizes. You don't have to worry about hurt boxes whatsoever. Now, if you're a gamer, you'll SSL FF4 on everyone. Now, that's hard. I wouldn't say as hard as counter hit back four into FF4 or sidestep right into Peacekeeper. 
because I did get it in this stream. <laughs> RFF back three into Peacekeeper is actually harder. You need a clean sidestep at the right frame in order to have leeway into do an ff4 and that ff4 has to come out asap right after that you know clean ssl so a more friendly combo right after counter hit back three is to sidestep forward two you'll get it down like so so you're three points away from 70 that's not bad so 70 damage because before this combo was giving you a jfsr yeah, you've seen all the combo videos in Tag 2 and Tekken 6, even in Tekken 5. Crazy. But they reduce the damage on that, but it still tracks towards the left. You get 67 damage. The other one, if you want to do so, which is a little bit easier, if you do, you know, you're having a hard time with getting an SSL into a forward 2, you just forward 3, down 3, 4, you're going to get their back, walk up a forward 2, and then bam. So you're 5 points away from the counter hit RFF back 3, B and B which is at 67, this one's 62, and the potential for relaunching, because you know how it works if the opponent attempts to stand up. So you could really be working with way more damage than you bargained for. See, at, at that point on the relaunch, you're 66, you're one damage away, and then you're just gonna add on top of that. Crazy. So this too, by the way, so if in back four, it's kind of like moving towards the left. In back three, it's kind of moving towards the right. <laughs> But for the most part, if you want to like make it easier for yourself, just treat them both as 13 frame magic fours. The same thing with like Jin and Alisa's standing fours, they're 13 frame magic fours. But there is a slight evasiveness to them. But again, you have to make sure your lab work is right for that. And that's very, very specific lab work. This video will not cover that. I just I just just telling you that it exists. So that's the most part for both these two moves. Basically, their main use is if you know you want to disrespect the frames a little bit in certain situations, you can like back four or RFF back three, or if like let's say you were dancing in neutral here in RFF and you want to disrespect, bam, hit them with it. And then if you get the plus two, you can still check them, which is great. Both on both, on both, right? Back four and RFF back three. And then even on block, it's the same situation for RFF back three as well. You get the exact same stuff. Well, not necessarily the exact same stuff, because again, Horang ends up in RFF. So the opposite things on Horang here, but so you can do a DF2 back three. You can do a back one. That's that's gonna like make the opponent get hit even more. Actually, let's show that out here. It's it's wild, I tell you, when you see it. So stand switch back three into back one. Let's say the opponent's gonna really try to keep you in, lock you in. Well, let's say not with that move. Let's say with this move. There we go with DF2. You're like, oh, it's negative seven. Oh nope. There you there they go. I'm gonna try let's let me do a homing move right the negative seven sometimes let's say they're late oh, oh my goodness there you go very late so the other two ones those are you're probably going to get hit but are they super late yeah and if they're throwing out a move that does not track towards that specific side they're going to get hit <laughs> if you're going to be like <laughs> really really cheesy that's like the most uh you can do so they're really inbuilt for defense and they do have tracking towards the left and towards the right for, you know, the situations where you're in left foot forward and right foot forward. They're pretty straightforward counter hit launchers for the most part. And if you want to like frame trap at a high, right? You can kind of like do that. Or if you find yourself versus an evasive move on the while standing 4-4 situation and they're stepping towards, you know, a specific side and when they throw that move out, and RFF 4-4 will not catch it because the first one hit will not, but the second one will. But by, by that point, it's too late. You got hit by the evasive move. That's where back three comes into play. Bam. All right, stop. It's literally telling them stop. <laughs> it's the same thing even in like a 1-2 a punish into a back four. Or let's say a 1-1 one, one punish into a back four. Or even a 4-3 punish into a back four. I have nothing more to say about this move. Or moves. <laughs> That's all the cheese I have. Again, I've been Frontier. And the next advanced Hawaiian lesson is going to be somewhere on the other side of the screen. Yeah, that's back, uh, back four and RFF, RFF back three. See you there in the next advanced Hawaiian lesson.